Dear listeners, help us reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Something super special awaits once we hit that milestone. Subscribe now and join the fun. The signs were they there or not. I guess they were, but I didn't recognize them or expected to see them. Or maybe it was finding one clue at a time that didn't set off alarms that there was something wrong. Nor did finding two or even three wake me up. I was just another loving and caring husband and father. And since the signs were found innocently and by chance over a period of time, they weren't put all together until that sad night our lives together were more or less like every other married couple. I guess we knew good times and bad times. There just wasn't a major of problem that came to light or that hit me in the face. My wife never told me there was a major issue, and she always told me if she had a problem, no, there was nothing wrong with our relationship, nothing wrong with our marriage, nothing wrong with my wife either. There was nothing going on that I saw, damn it, okay, okay, call me dumb, call me unobservant, or to trusting whatever, but I didn't see it happen or a change or anything until it hit me right in the jaw. But now there were just a many things wrong, and as I put them all together, I knew we had a major, the most major problem a couple could have, another person in our lives. I was going to confront her tonight when she got home. I was going to confront my wife of eight years regarding the things I have accumulated as proof of her infidelity. I was sure this could only go badly and was scared. I was scared that was I was thinking and found was all true and quiet. Frankly, I loved her so much I was dying inside about what would happen when we Ted. But I had no choice. I had to ask her what was going on and then wait for the hammer to fall. Maybe she would confess and beg me to stay with her God, I hope so, because I loved her more than life itself, and I would most likely forgive her as long as it stopped, so let me back up and begin from the beginning. The first thing I noticed was the lack of sex. We went from two or three times a week to two or three times a month, this had going on now, for about three months. She told me she was just tired and work had been extremely hard with very long, long hours. I knew she was working more hell. We haven't had a week alone for the past month. She was always being paged at the hospital. But it wasn't just the sex. It was the feeling of love and compassion that was missing. Also, she told me I was out of my mind and that it was my imagination when we did have sex. It was usually conducted and controlled by her, and it was quicker than before now. I'm not a spicy star. Most husbands aren't. But over the past eight years, we used to make love for at least an hour, Maybe two now. It seemed like 20 minutes was all she was willing to give me. Then she would work hard, really hard, to make me climax as quickly as I could. I used to hold her and continue to make love to her for another half of hour after intercourse, and sometimes that would lead us to do it again now. When I rolled off of her, she got up immediately and went into the bathroom. I would hear her cleaning herself completely. When she got in bed, she would lay there with her back to me. Things like that showed me she didn't have the affection she once had for me, so I tried harder only to be rebuffed again and again. Lately, there has been no sex at all. For maybe three weeks, the second clue was her temperament and attitude changed. She got pissed off at me much faster, her kidding and kindness towards everyone. Even the children was greatly reduced. Shirley was much more of a quick temper now than she had ever been before, the once nice and gentle woman had changed almost overnight to a woman I didn't recognize. Sometimes her attitude towards me especially was along the lines of, leave me alone, or I guess I have to put up with your again today. She would answer me with a simple, what or what now, or I don't feel like it tonight, etc., that brings me to the fateful night at all, went to hell. I was home on time from work, and being Friday night, I knew we would be going out to dinner like we usually do on the weekends. She worked long hours, and neither of us feels like messing with the food, dishes, etc. as usual. On the weekend, she had sent the kids to her mother's or my folks. Sometimes it was good and gave us time to be together, but now it only gave her a chance to yell and be pissed off at me with no kids around to keep her courteous at all. And she would really telling me off, so I tried extra things like flowers and gifts. I had sent her flowers today. I saw them in the living room as I came into the house undoing my tie. I said, babe, I'm home. Are we going out to dinner tonight? She said, come upstairs. But come up. I want you to see my new outfit. Yes, we're going. She seemed okay. At least her voice didn't have vinegar or pepper in it so far. So good. I would be as nice as I could, and maybe we could have had a nice time together. I called back, right? I'll be right up. I said to myself, another new outfit. Christ, it's the fifth one this month but no sex and bad moods from working too much.
And new outfits alone don't mean anything to a husband. I mean, hell, I was raised to believe that women had to have new things to wear all the time, and so I really didn't care if my wife brought new things. The world was made so women would shop, spend money, and buy stuff. It's what made the world go around, right? It especially didn't mean my wife was cheating on me. When I arrived in the doorway of our bedroom, Shirley was standing there modeling an extremely short, I mean eight or N9, in about the knee short. Her butt cheek was just covered by the bottom of the dress, and it was tight. I mean, anyone could see that she didn't have a thing on under it, dark blue in color. The dress emphasized her lovely body hell. That was like saying the Super Bowl was just another football game. The first thing that I could think of was she looked single and 25 and was going out clubbing with her girlfriends. I smiled and said, is that it? She smiled and said, yep. How do I look babed now? Shirley looks good when she gets up in the morning after a hard day's night of parting and sex afterwards. So here she was with her hair done makeup on and standing as she was slipping on the left high heel as she did. She was bending backwards, which meant her body was arched and her hips were pushing outwards a little as she bent her knee up and used her hand to adjust the shoe. She looked hotter than the sand on the beaches of Cancun in August without thinking. I said it well, where are you going out with the girls clubbing? You look like a 23-year-old babe going out and looking to get some hot action. I was thinking she looked like the girl you see in every bar and dance hall. You know, there's always one who stands out and looks fantastic. But after saying what I did to her, I said to myself, oh, did that just come out of my mouth? Did I say that? I meant it both as a compliment and like I was kidding her at age 33. After two children, she still looks like she did before the kids in her early 20s. But Shirley took it completely wrong and told me she was sure that there were lots of men out there who would think she was closer to 23 than 33. And I sure didn't appreciate all the work it took for her to stay that way. She was actually mad. Just like that, she jumped on me. The attitude towards me was certainly different. I said, wait, Cher, you're getting upset for nothing. You asked me, and I told you what. I felt you look great, baby. It's just that you don't usually wear those tight, short dresses. It's not that you can't wear them, it's that you have, haven't had one on in years. She said, well, get used to it, buddy, because I have decided to dress how I feel, and I feel like I'm 23, and thanks a hell of a lot. I was sure you would love to see me get all dressed up for tonight. I have worked hard to get my stomach back down to size 22 again, the same size I was in college, but no, of course not. Not you. You think I look too old or too fat or something, and as usual, you make fun of me as said, Woo, wait, a uh, minute I was kidding with you, you look super. And body looks as good now as it ever has even better. But I just think that dress is a little too, I was looking for the right choice of words, short and tight, whatever. But she said it for me to sexy for an old married woman to wear out to eat dinner. Well, I'm not an old married woman, and I love the way I look, and people at work told me I look fantastic. I said the people at work you were, that to work. Jesus. Shirley put her hands on her hips and looked at me like I was the dumbest man on the face of the earth. Hands on her hips made the dress rise up another inch. Hell, it seemed that every movement she made caused the dress rise up a little more and looked even shorter. And it didn't go back down either unless she pulled it down, she said, of course not. Are you crazy? I brought it while I was on lunch and then put it on and showed everyone just before I left to come home. I did we at home and you know what? Not one person that saw me in it told me it wasn't a great outfit, or that I didn't look great in it. Then my husband comes home and just criticizes it. And me, I said, the dress does look great on you. Surely if you were going clubbing and partying with the girls, you know, looking for sex and single again, then I'd say if I saw you out, I would say, wow, you're dressed for sex. I know if I was a guy in a club, it would get my full attention if you walked past me. She said, how dare you say I look like I'm dressed for sex? And you might as well not even think about that, but you'd be getting no sex from the old married woman for quiet sometime. In fact, you have a good idea. Maybe I'll just call Judy and we'll go clubbing since I'm dressed for sex. Judy was the single woman with a child and surely went out with her once every other week or so to shop movies or dinner, but she was always home by 11 p.m., so no problem, right? They were like a sister then. She said, yes, maybe I should go clubbing. Judy has asked me to do that with her before when we go out, but since she's single and I'm not, I didn't go. Maybe I need a younger man to appreciate me, and I bet I would get some nice young guy to dance with me in this outfit. She ran her hands down the dress, straightening it and making sure I saw how it accentuated her body. Then she continued, 
Maybe I'll meet a young man who appreciates the way I look and the time it takes to stay this way and the effort I make to look like this. Yes, someone who cares about how I have taken care of myself. Maybe a guy who would love to see me dress this way and will hold me tight while we danced. You sure don't I said what I'm always telling you how good you look and how beautiful you are. I don't know where you get off saying these things. I have been married long enough now to know that whatever else I said from here on would only piss her off more. But I'm a man, damn it, and the dumbest that I am, I couldn't let it drop. Finally, after she stopped raving at me for what seemed like five minutes, I held up my hand. I walked right up to her and looked her in the eyes. I then realized that the heel she had made is just about the same height. Now I said, wait a second back, the truck up. Surely you call me up to the bedroom as soon as I walk into the house. I seen God knows how many new outfits these last three month on you. They all looked great. Did you hear me? I said, great, I spelled it. Then I said, then you asked me what I think of this one. It's the sexiest of all of them so far. Then when I try and kid with you about it, you get pissed off instantly, you get pissed off. Then when I tried to explain you, I was kidding. You threatened me with going out and picking us some young guy dressed in that outfit that oozed sexuality, and you expect me to stand here and listen to you beat the hell out of me because I suggested only after you asked that the dress might, might be a little too short and too tight for you, a wife and mother of two who looks great anyway, but maybe shouldn't be trying to look 20 again, at least not. All the time, what's wrong with this picture, you asked. I answered, it seems I can't, why, either way, here. She just looked at me inside as she adjusted her stocking, and I knew she wasn't wearing anything under the dress now for certain. No bra, no panties, only the thigh-high stockings. I said, look, Shirley, you look fantastic, and you don't need a dress like that to prove it. As long as we're together, you can wear anything you want. But I just don't want you to wear something that tight, that short out with Judy, or when I'm not with you, it could only bring trouble. But let's not fight about it. Come on, I just got home from work, and I want the weekend to go well for us. It's the first one in a while where you haven't had something to do or have been called away to work, she said. Oh, and I guess that's my fault. It's my fault that some drunk runs into a phone pole and I get called because there's an emergency at the hospital to, we try to save him. I get paid, it's my job, my job, but just like yours, I get paged and have to go in. I'm not going to apologize to you for that. You'll have to deal with it. You knew it would happen when I took the promotion. You sure don't fight about the extra money coming in. And don't ever tell me I can't wear something when I go out because I would wear it just for spite, I said extra money. I bet you have spent more than you bring in with all these new clothes. But it's not the money, babe, it's not that at all. Surely, it's every time we get to go out alone you get called away and we don't get to spend an evening alone together. It's like they have a camera here and know when we might be going to have a good time when they see that they call you. God knows our sex life is almost non-existent these past three months. She didn't reply. She just looked in the mirror and turned this way and that, smiling. She didn't say anything. So I said, come on, let's go to dinner. As soon as I shower, she turned and walked out of the room. I watched her walk past me and down the hallway in the dress I stood there and said to myself, welcome home, what the hell happened, okay? So new clothes and a wife who pounces on her husband with the slightest wrong word and no sex does make for a cheating wife. Sure, I didn't like the changes, and I didn't like her flaunting her body in the dress. But as long as she was with me, I gave in and didn't say anything else, but cheating it didn't even cross my brain. We went to dinner that night, and she wore the dress, much to my disapproval. But I didn't say anything. I'm sure the dinner would have been good. But I had lost most of my appetite. The two vodkas and tonics I had before dinner helped me mellow a little and get past the crude looks from the men. And the disapproval from the women, I had to admit, surely looked incredible. I just didn't like her wearing it if we weren't together, and it really didn't fit with the restaurant and what we were doing. But as long as she only wore it when she was with me, then I was okay with it, as I could be. It didn't cross my mind that she could wear it without me anytime she wanted. She sure looked like she was out hunting for a man or men. The outfit almost screamed, I want to get drilled hard by someone, anyone. And while it looked fantastic on her, I felt uncomfortable from the way most of the men there looked at her. The conversation wasn't much. And as bad and as hard as I tried to talk about things, I got the one work or one sentence answer. She never even tried to keep the conversation going. Finally, I just sat there and drank my drink. The dinner arrived and I had taken maybe two bits when, damn, if her cell phone didn't ring, she looked at the number and then ignored it. Then ten minutes later, it rang again. She looked at the phone and me and still didn't answer it. 
She looked at the number again and then told me it was work and she would call them back later. I felt guilty and said, well, maybe it's an emergency, babe. Maybe you should take it, she said. Maybe you're right. She got up from the table giving half the inn and the place a nice long view up her thighs as she swung her legs out of the booth the dress had written up her body just like it was supposed to do. It was so short now that I got a flash of the tops of her thigh-high stockings under it. I knew that guys in front of our booth saw much more, and then, without pulling the dress down any at all, she walked away towards the ladies' room. I swear I could see the bottoms of her butt cheeks. As she walked, I watched her walk and place the phone next to her ear and start talking. She was gone, maybe 15 minutes, when she came back. I asked if everything was okay, and she sighed and said no, but look, I have to go. I have to leave now. They want me to assist with an emergency operation. I'm glad I did take the call. It's a little girl who fell, and we have to relieve the pressure in her head. Look, I'm sorry I have to go. I said we can try again tomorrow. Okay, I know you have to go, so go. She looked at me for a few seconds. Damn, she looks so beautiful in that dress. I said, are you going home and change first? She said, no, I'll get one of those green doctor's outfit at the hospital. Look, this could take quiet a while. I'm sure it's a major operation I got to run. I'll get a snack before I get to work. She kissed me goodbye. Sliding her lips across my lip lips, she walked out as all the men watched her. As she stood on the corner, she caught a cab and was gone. I sat there wondering what the folks in the hospital were going to say when she come in. And they saw how she was dressed. Then I remembered she had already showed them the dress I ate and went home with Shirley's dinner in a box, just in case she was hungry. When she got home, I saw the light on the answering machine blinking in press play. A man's voice came on and said, Shirley, this is Ray. Can you break free? I need you tonight. Please call me as soon as you get this message. It's an emergency. I figured they called her at home first. Then not reaching her, they called her cell phone while I was there. I checked and deleted the other messages still on the machine. There were four of them from Rye, but new sexy clothes, no sex, a T-tin wife who goes nuclear on her husband for the slightest little thing, and a bunch of messages from the same guy. All of these doesn't make for a cheating wife. At least in my little brain, it didn't register that way. I dialed the number, and it rang and rang before someone picked it up. A voice said, Shirley, are you on your way yet? I said, this is Shirley's husband. And yes, she is on the way. Who is this? Please, the voice said. This is Dr. Ray Stevens. I work with Shirley at the hospital. She told me she was going to leave you at the restaurant 25 minutes ago. Where is she? I told him she was on her way, and then I asked him why he had been calling here so much. He got up tight quickly and said, look, but is it? I call her when I want her. I call her when I need her here to help me. It's her job, okay? And he hung up, slamming the phone down in my ear, Owl. I said to no one, add another. One to the growing list. New sexy clothes, no sex pissed off all the time at me. Multiple phone calls from the same guy that said he needed her and wanted her. There was nothing about work. And then the guy gets nasty with me when I ask him a simple question about the number of calls from him. And I knew later that Shirley would go absolutely nuts on me for even asking him anything. But all that doesn't mean crap. It sure doesn't mean my wife is cheating on me, but I did say, God, what a life. So I sat down and waited for her to come home. I turned on the TV, but there was nothing on. I really wanted to watch, so I got up and washed up the dishes in the sink. Then I went into the bedrooms and got the laundry. I figured I'd wash the clothes while I waited for her to come home. We both washed the clothes and shared the things that needed to be done, but I seemed to be doing more of them lately while she was out, but they needed to be, then no, I'm not the husband type. I just believe in helping out with things since we both worked for a living. As I finished up with our bathroom, I was closing the hamper when I saw a bra behind the hamper. When I bent over to get it, I could tell that something was spilled on it. The bra was a lacy light blue, but there was something caked on it. It was a white, creamy color stuff between the cups, and over one of them food was my first reaction to seeing it. But then I picked at it and took a fingertip into my mouth, spitting it out. I could taste its bitterness, but had no idea what the hell it was. As I sorted the clothes, I noticed a bunch of new colored underwear from, from Victoria. Secrets, or Fredericks of Hollywood, already in the washer, she must have forgotten to dry them. Shirley had about a dozen new undergarments included in them were thongs, which she had never worn before, as far as I knew. Let's say she never wore them for me. There were bras that I had never seen before, and they did more than, shall we say, pushed up, lifted or separated her breasts. Some were just a sort of half bra, and I realized that if she wore these half-exposed 
and there were two that might as well not have been bras at all. They were that transparent and sheer. I began to separate the dirty clothes, the bleach items from the other color items, and that's when noticed the pair of tan panties hiding inside a pair of slacks. It looked like she took them off quickly, and at the same time I picked up the slacks and pulled the panties out of the inside of the slacks. I was about to throw them with the other clothes when I stopped. They were stained, too, with the same white stuff it was caked and stuck on like dried food. I had to really flakes them off with my fingernail. The panties had it all between the leg openings on the inside. I was puzzled as I looked at them. I said, wait a minute, wait just a minute. It was Sean. Jesus Christ, there was come on one of the new sexy bras, and in her panties I was yelling down to, no one, what the hell? Surely as I looked closer at the dirty clothes, I found nothing else. So I took the stained, covered panties and bra and put them in a plastic bag to show my wife. I said, Lucy, you have some explaining to do. I went into the kitchen and got a beer. My brain was racing now, reviewing all the things that had been going on with Shirley and me. I wrote them down. Let's see new sexy clothes, nasty attitude towards me, and no sex phone calls from the same guy. And now new underwear and semen stains on some of them. Does this mean she is cheating? Hell! Yes, but I need more information. I called the hospital and asked for Shirley. The lady told me I think she's gone left around 9 p.m. Please hold on a minute. I said 9 p.m. That was 30 minutes ago. She should be here now. Or very soon there was no one on the other end. I was on hold. When the lady came back, she said, yes, sir. She left at 9 p.m., but she was taking a couple of people home. They were going to be stopping off for a drink and some dinner first. She said if her husband called to tell him she would be late and not to wait up is this. He, I told the lady. Yes, and thanked her. Knowing how she was dressed made me very upset. She should have known better than to wear that type of outfit if she was on call. This would be the fifth weekend in a two-month period that something like this had happened. We would be someplace, and she would get paged and have to leave. I was mad as hell now and decided to check out the rest of Shirley's things, the panties and bra I was going to take to a lab, and have a friend run a test to see what was on them for sure. And if it was semen, I would ask him to also run a DNA test for me again. I added the late dinner with some friends to the ever-growing list of things we would talk about later on now to check out Shirley's stuff. First, the closet where her clothes were hanging. Shirley had the big closet. It was a walk-in. I went over her things and found two blouses that had buttons off and slash or holes where the buttons used to be. I could only imagine the buttons were ripped off. Maybe Dr. Ray did that when he was in a hurry to open it up and couldn't wait for her to get undressed. I found one pair of slacks ripped in the back on the seam around her hips. There were a couple of other items that were ripped, too. It was like someone was trying to get them off to fast or they were being pulled and stretched. But the thing that really was the icing on the cake for me were the new things in the back of the clothes when I took the last one of the low-cut outfits out and held it up. I smelled something sweet placing it to my nose. I inhaled deeply and knew what it was the odor of aftershave cologne, and it wasn't my type. All these clothes were new and had been worn maybe once they were very erotic looking, just like the dress she had on tonight. There were a few other things that had different odors on them, none that I recognized. There was a group of clothes I had never seen before in plastic bags from the store where she had purchased them then, or fresh from the cleaners, they still had sales slips or cleaning tags on them. As I checked the cleaning bags, I could see that they were taken in on either Saturday mornings or Monday afternoons, and they were picked up on Wednesdays. I recorded the information and checked it with the dates as far as I could remember when Shirley was pagey while we were out. They were the same time periods, or they coincide with the time period in night. Cheryl was out with her girlfriend Judy, three months worth of cleaning and new clothes that would synchronize with her being paged by her new boss, or since she had been going out with Judy more to talk about. I said I left the clothes and took a shot and checked the calendar on the PC, which belonged to Shirley. Not much to go on the letters PF and RS or meet Judy on different dates for the past three months was all that was there. What the hell was I think if she was cheating, she sure wouldn't leave that sort of information around on her PC, but RS could indicate Dr. Ray Stevens the dates were right. There was nothing else but deleted emails from the Reynolds company, who did. We know that works there. Judy, I tried to get into the actual email, but they had a password protection on them that made me wonder why so much security. I realized I would have to be as clever, or more so, 
then she was in order to get all the proof I wanted, wanted to be 100% certain, plus I still did not have any hard proof that my wife was actually cheating on me. I guess my married brain wasn't working as quickly as my business brain. Plus, it was hard to believe that my wife, the mother of my two children, was screwing around with a guy named A and PF, who or what the hell was PF. I went to the kitchen and got a beer. Then I sat on the steps that went to the garage and said, let's see new clothes and underwear attitude towards husband change drastically phone calls from the same guy nasty voice and hanging up panties and BR stained with something that looked very much like seen aftershave on a blouse that didn't belong to me, was that what I had gathered so far as proof, yes. Was it enough to confront her? I didn't know, wasn't sure, was it? It enough to go see a lawyer? Yes. Did I want that? I didn't know I was frustrated, mad, and starting to get very sad. Did this mean my wife was cheating on me? I was getting sicker in my stomach as the clues built and built towards a yes answer. Then as I emptied the trash out of the bathroom and saw two empty Duce bottles, it looked like she had used two of them in a short period of time since the trash had been emptied last time. Maybe two weeks I held on to them and put them in the same place. I had all the other things I took the trash out dumped it into the big trash in the garage as I dumped it, I saw a pack of matches from the flamingo bar and grill already in the trash can. There was a bright pink flamingo on the cover, which was all black. I knew I had never been to that place, so they must have come from Shirley looking further now at the bills and receipts file. I found the following information. Then there were credit card statements and receipts which showed a charge for a hotel they must have stayed there on the night she was going to the movies with Judy. Funny looks like she never did go go out with Judy. She was just a cover. And I knew Judy she would cover for her best friend. I would get no help from her. I was sure. Then as I was about to close the desk, I saw a piece of paper on the bottom of the file. It was a gas receipt from a station out by that hotel I had a receipt for that was proof she was out there. No doubt that she had spent more than one time with him now. But there were receipts for only two or three nights if she had been cheating on me. It had been three months. Where did she go the rest of the time she was with him? Unknown yet, while I was out in the garage, I decided to check my wife's car, too. I looked under all the seats and the dashboard. There was nothing. Then I popped the hood and trunk as I was checking out the trunk. I dropped my damn flashlight and it rolled to the back of the trunk and stayed there. Of course, it was that sort of night I had to actually climb into the trunk about halfway to get it back out. I bumped my head, yelled some nasty words, and that's when I noticed something being held on the bottom of a speaker under the back window. It was one of those magnet boxes you use in a car to hold a spare key. You know it gets hidden under the fender or bumper, and if you lock your keys in the car, you can get that one to open the door. But this one was up under the trunk and back window, hidden completely. Unless you knew it was there when I tried the key, it didn't open any door or trunk to Shirley's car. I took it and would make a copy of it and put it back in her car. As I looked closer at the match pack and opened it, I saw that there was a map on the inside showing its location out on Route 22 and US 1. I knew a place called Memories or something like that. Out that way, it was a strip club, an expensive strip club. I knew I would have to make sure we had a babysitter the next time Cheryl went out with Judy so I could follow her, and I would have to check out the Flamingo Grill one day, too. I decided to call my friend Larry, who had contacts that could bug phones and PCs and break into password-protected files. I went back in and took a thumb drive and copied the emails I couldn't open. I then packed all the things I had found in a bag and hide them in my car. I went back and took two of the outfits that were ripped or torn, or that had a button off. There were more than I first realized. There was a skirt that had a large rip at the top and a button missing that held it together. There was a sweater, which was very soft. It was made of lamb's wool, expensive and new, and I hadn't seen it before. It looked like the neck had been stretched badly. There was a small rip on the sweater, too. It started where the V ended not much, just a little rip, but I took it and placed it with the rest of the things I had accumulated. Then I waited for my wife to come home. I watched TV, and I guess I fell asleep until the front door opened, and then walked my lovely wife with her skirt riding high on her hips. She smiled at me and said, you shouldn't have waited up, but it's late. Almost 1 a.m., I'm going to bed. I'll talk with you in the morning. I really beat. I said Ray called earlier, but I guess you saw him. She stopped and turned towards me. She looked mad now and said, oh, yes. What the hell were you thinking asking my boss a bunch of dumb questions? Don't do that again. 
but she began to read me the Rights Act, saying she had a right to talk with anyone she wanted to as often as she wanted to. Who the hell did I think I was talking to her boss like that, etc., etc., etc.? She never questions me when my secretary calls me or goes with me to meetings, etc. She read me the Rights Act to the point where I really felt it was major overkill. I just stood there and let her rave on me. Then I watched her walk out of the room. I was pissed but decided to hold off until I have everything that I needed. She said, I'm going to bed. I'm really tired. There was no good night or I love you. Nothing. I came into the bedroom and watched as she reached behind her and tried to unzip her dress. She was working hard to get the dress off her body. I came over and started to help her. We finally got it off her body. It was that tight. She stood there with her back to me. She quickly put a robe on right away before she turned and looked at me. I looked for rips or stains on the dress, but there were none. She said, what are you looking for? I didn't answer, answer her, but instead I answered, I have your dinner from the restaurant in the refrigerator if you're still hungry. But the lady at the hospital told me you were going to go get something to eat with a couple of other people. I wasn't surprised when she said, no, I'm not hungry. We all ate after the operation. I'm going to shower and go to sleep. I said, they told me you left at 9 p.m. What if you so long, babe? Who did you go to dinner with in that dress? She said, we ate and we having fun, bud, and I didn't realize what time it was. Okay, we even went dancing afterwards. Yes, I went out in this dress without you, bud. And you know what everyone told me how good I looked in it? I was the woman everyone wanted tonight, but the woman that everyone wanted to drill. But it was great. And you know what? I loved all the attention I reached for her arm and she pulled away. She said, no, but. Not tonight, that's for sure, maybe. Never again. I'm going to take a shower and go to bed. Why don't you sleep in the other room? I said, what no effing way in hell? Who are you with, Dr. Ray? She said, fine, I'll sleep there. Then I want peace and quiet and not to be grabbed all night by you. I said all I wanted was a kiss. Good night from my wife, Cheryl. I wasn't going to attack or assault you. Tell me whom you were out with. Was it Dr. Ray Stevens? She just looked at me and went to the bathroom. I followed her and she shut the door. I stood there for a minute and then knocked, asking, I want to know who you were with tonight, surely. And I'm not leaving until you tell me there was nothing. So I yelled, God damn it. Surely talk to me. What's the hell is happening here to us? She opened the door, dressed in a towel. She said, for God's sakes, okay, okay, here's your damn kiss, good night. She bent just a little towards me, and I kissed her. She didn't return it, she said as she was closing the door. God, what a crybaby, now will you leave me alone so I can get ready for bed? I'm tired as I kissed her. I could smell the same aftershave lotion that was on the dress in her closet. I don't know why, but I reached for her and pulled her to me and held her tight. She held the towel. She said, let me go. I want to shower and go to bed. Let go of me, damn you. I realized she wasn't moving at all and was turning her head and avoiding my attempts to kiss her again. She was just standing there while I kissed her cheek and neck. She didn't move. Her face was a look of hate, and there was no love in her eyes at all. Only sadness I could smell the aftershave. And when I did manage to kiss her lips, I could have been kissing a piece of stone. I broke the embrace and looked at her. What is wrong with you? She said very plainly, I want a shower. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. Okay, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Yes, we have to talk in the morning. Surely that's for damn sure. Yes, I know. But she started to close the door. When I said, what does that mean? You know, you know what? Surely I pushed the door open. No, not now. All I want is the shower and go to bed. Now works for me. Come on, let and talk. No again from her. How about I join you in the shower? You looked so hot tonight. You got me all worked up. No, but jerk off. What, what did you say to me? I told you to go jerk off. You won't be getting any sex from me now. Get out. I was shocked she had never told me that before. What right did she have to say that to me? I'm her husband. But I still tried and said I'll make it worth your while. No, but let me shower so I can go to bed. If you have that much of an urge, go jerk off. She pushed more on the door, I said loudly. No, Cheryl, I'm not leaving here until you tell me what is going on. I'm asking my wife of eight years to have sex with me right now tonight, goddammit. Well, I'm telling my so-called husband of eight long years, no get the hell out of the bathroom. I started to pull on the towel, and she screamed, fighting back, kicking and hitting me with none hand. Then she used both hands to hold the towel from me. I held on to it, winning slowly, finally. She was either DT tired or just gave up. I wasn't sure she just let it go and stood there looking at me. Me then, she said, happy now I looked at her magnificent body and beautiful face. I saw why she held the towel as tight as she did and why she didn't want to have sex with me. Her body was red and covered with hickey marks had she had anything else done to her.
As I looked down her body, I saw her thighs red with handprints on them, and then I saw it. There was a dried, stained line on each of her inner thighs. It had to come from where it was still leaking out and running down her leg. That's why she wanted to get a shower, and why she told me no. I asked very softly, surely, what this I reached for and touched her. She jumped back a little. She looked at me and then took a deep breath as she said angrily, What does it look like, bud? It looks like the same thing that's on a pair of your new panties. It looks like semen, is it, Ray's? She sighed loudly and said, oh, Jesus, please let me take a shower and then we can talk. Let me clean up first. Answer my question. Surely is it semen? Is it Ray? I said the last five words so loud she jumped again and I knew the neighbors heard me. She looked at me and then she looked down at the floor as she said one word very softly. Yes, that's all she said. I stood there looking at her. I asked again, is it Ray? She said, yes, again. Then she saw my face and said, oh God, don't start crying, but be a man. Be one for the first time in your life. Oh, get out so I can shower. Do you have any idea why I'm crying? Shirely, yes, because I had sex tonight with the new man in my life, the man you'll have to deal with from now on. I didn't hear all of what she said. I answered by saying, no, I'm crying because of the love we don't have anymore. I'm crying because of the feeling of grief and sadness that washed over me tonight when I realized you were cheating on me. I'm crying because we are done as a husband and wife. I'm crying because I have only hate and contempt for you. Now it's like I have changed completely over the past four hours. Surely I can't believe it. I went from worshiping and loving and adoring you to hating and wishing you were dead. I would have died for you. Cheryl. I would have done anything I could to keep us together, anything that is but being a god. Help me, I wish you would die right now in front of me. You have hurt me so bad, and you have killed me inside. I'm dead inside now. I feel nothing, no love, no desire, happiness, and no tenderness for you, only sadness and hate. She looked at me, and finally she said, You are so sad, but you have no idea what has been going on, have you? You just realized it tonight, that's sad you were sad. She stood there for a few seconds and then finished by saying, look, I'm really tired. Are you done for now? We'll discuss it to the end tomorrow. Oh, yes, I'm done and we're done, Cheryl. We're done completely. I hope it was worth it. You lost your house, your husband, and I sure hope your kid children will see about all that. But I don't just plan to roll over and let you take everything. But even if you do, I still got a newer and better lover. He's a doctor, but he's rich and he is so much bigger and, and better than you. He loves me and I love him. We told each other that tonight after we had sex two hours, but we did it for two hours. When was the last time you could do that? Never not since the first year we were married. You never give us two hours to know, Shirley. You're always in a hurry. That's because your idea of sex is a waste of time. You do it like an old man, Ray does me, like a stallion. I was good enough to give you two children. She laughed and said, what makes you think our children are yours? What make you think you're the father of any children? She laughed, and I felt myself shrinking more and more from those words. Then she stopped talking and just stood there looking at me like I was the most pathetic person she had ever seen. Are you telling me you know for sure that I'm not the father of our two kids? She smiled and said, I got you worried now, don't I, to tell you the truth? But I don't really know they may be or they maybe are one of the other two men I was doing at the time. None of us took any protection because you wanted kids. I never did and figured you would take care of the kids, giving me more time to get laid. I, I figured if either of my lovers got me knocked up, you would think you did it anyway. So I don't know who the fathers are for our children, but I doubt it's you. I asked why, and she told me, well, to be honest, you're just as small in the tool department to get anyone knocked up. You're not big enough to deposit that deep inside me to mix with me seed. I sighed and said, I am big enough for a normal woman, but for a 304, maybe I'm not well. At least you're not sure that's good, I'll have them tested. She yelled, the hell you will. You leave our kids out of this, you and Tool. So I said, why, surely, why did you stay married to me if you have been cheating on me all these years? She said, well, for my family and yours, I guess, and for security. You know, I did love you, bud, when we first got married, but that all changed after the first time I got laid by a real man with a real Tool that was about three months after our first child. I guess he came on to me and I loved the attention and how I felt young and free. You took care of the kids and I let him have me almost every other night for six months when we worked together at nights. And I guess I've been waiting for the right guy ever since, you know, a doctor with a big tool, someone who could take care of me in every way I wanted more out of life than a small tool husband and two kids. But 
I said, and Rai, is he the one you have been waiting for? She smiled and closed her eyes and said, yes, yes, but I'm afraid for your sake he is. He asked me to leave you tonight and stay with him, quite frankly. But I was going to tell you that in the morning when we got up, I was, was going to tell you I wanted a separation, but honestly, it wouldn't have done us any good, look. We have been done as a husband and wife for a long time. Well, at least I have as a wife. I think you seeing me like this with his fresh juices running out of my body will make it so much easier for both of us now. I guess there's no thinking about it or waiting or trial separation. We can just split everything 50 slash 50 s and get on with our lives. She smiled again, and this time I saw a very evil look on her face. She said, I don't see us together anymore, that is. Unless you can stand me being with him whenever I want to be, I will tell you right up front I will be spending more time with him than I will with you. But you'll have the children anyway, so you should be okay. And I'll tell you what, I'll stay married to you for the kids' sake until they get older, but you'll have to deal with no sex for me at all. My body and love will be for Ray. I'll only be a mother for the kids. If you can't handle that, then I guess you'll lose me forever. I couldn't believe what she was telling me. My brain didn't work. It wasn't registered. I just looked at her. Tears were running down my face, and I was almost sobbing with sadness. My heart was being broke, and now she was stepping on it. She smiled a little and said, look at me, but don't hold your head down. Look at my body body. You can see how used it is. I loved him using me, the body that now belongs to him completely. He drills me like you never did. Not even the first times together, not on our honeymoon or anniversaries, or any time we have been together, he thrills me and drives me wild with lust, desire, and passion. He wants me all the time, but and I want him. He's so much better than you in everything. Her words were cutting into me more and more, and the really sad thing was I knew she was doing it on purpose. It was time for me to strike back the best way I could guilt and embarrassment was all I had. So I said, how about being a father? and someone who used to respect and love you like you were the only woman on the face of the earth? Or does he love you because he dresses you like the 304 you are now? Does he want our children too? Sure, does he tell you you love them, or are you all he'll take when you leave me? She didn't answer me right away, so I continued. Will he love you when you're sick or hurt, and maybe so you can't screw him anymore? Will he love you? Then how about when you're old and can just about stand and walk, let alone screw in ten different positions, or like, I think he'll do use you up and then leave you for another newer and younger woman who was the woman before you. Cheryl, have you ever met her? Seen her know her talk to her about him? She said he was married a few years ago, but he's single now. No, I haven't met his ex-wife, and I don't want to. I know he desires me and wants me more than anything else in his life right now. Heans even told me we could move away so I wouldn't have to see or bother with you again. He loves me, and I love him. I said no. Surely I don't think he is better than me in everything, only using you like a pump-up doll. She said he does me wild and with more lust in his thumb than you have in your entire body. You wouldn't understand what it means because you never had it in you. You last a tenth of the time he does me, so you gave up your children and your married life with me for a bigger tool. I hope for your sake he's worth it a year from now, eight years from now. If you make it that long, he'll cheat on you, and I'm sure you weren't his first or his last guys like him. Never change. Surely all he wants is a victory. Then he keeps getting rewarded each time you lower yourself again by dressing or acting like you have been doing, and go back to him, good luck with him. I'm betting once you move in with him... He'll lose that excitement, and after less than a year, he'll be cheating on you with someone younger. She said, F you, but you're just hurt and upset now about him and me. You're just talking sour grapes, that's all it is, but we are in love and we like each other. He's wonderful, and he's taking me to the Caribbean next week. Yes, next week I won't be here. I'll be packing my things, my new things, and my most sexist things, and be leaving you over the weekend when I come home. I'll get the rest of my stuff, then we can deal with whatever you decide— with regards to the divorce or if you want me to stay and act as the kid's mother. But remember, I won't be your wife. We'll deal with all that when I get back from my wonderful trip. I had begun to walk away as she was saying the part to me I was sick and my head was raging with pain. I just couldn't talk to her about this anymore. It was over. And I knew it. She was yelling now as she finished her last comment to me. Yes, we'll deal with it when I get back from the Caribbean, when I get back from my honeymoon before my wedding. I'll have my lawyer contact yours on Monday. Here's his card with his telephone number on it. Ray gave me it to me to give to you in the morning, but you might as well have it now. Since you know about us, I don't know what happened after that.
I still don't recall it at all. There are dark places in my brain that show nothing like I was sleeping. But here's what I do recall when I heard the last comment she made about dealing with me after her wonderful trip and honeymoon. And before the wedding, it was like someone shoved a dagger into my stomach. I've been over sick and began to gag as I began to vomit. I stood up and began to turn. Seeing her standing there with her hands on her hips, I vomited again on the rug. The last thing I recall for sure was I began to run back towards her. There was a hate in me now I didn't realize I had in me since the war. I knew I was going to kill. I couldn't stop in a flash. I knew Shirley was going to die. I had snapped. I had gone absolutely mad. She saw me, and it took a second for her to see the look on my face. Hers turned pale gray. She screamed and tried to get in the bathroom and close the bathroom door she pushed from the inside. As I pushed from the outside, she yelled, you better not touch me, us so get out, get out. She pushed as hard as she could but didn't make it. I pushed the door hard and it hit her, knocking her backwards. She reached out with her hand to try and stop her fell. She didn't make it again. She fell back and hit her head hard, the edge of the tub. There was a popping sound and then a small pool of blood began to form next to her head, next to the tub. She just lay there. I felt her pulse and knew she was dead. I called the police. It was a long and really bad two months during which I had a hearing regarding her death. And if I was going to be charged with her death, the good doctor showed up and told the judge about the affair they were having. He also told the judge she was going to separate from me and that she was going to tell me the news that weekend she died. He said he was the one who had put the marks on her body and he was the one who had sex with her that night. Twice he felt that when I saw what he had done to her, I snapped and killed her. When it was my turn, I told the judge I didn't know anything about the affair until I saw my wife's body lying there. My wife never said a word to me about and that I must have been asleep when she got home at 1 a.m. I acted in total shock when I told the court about it. As for what I said happened, I told the court about the dinner that night and that she had worn her new blue dress. I even had the restaurant manager and waiter explained that we were there and that she had left early to go to the hospital to work on a little girl I had no idea she was meeting a lover. Instead, the story I gave was I was in bed when she got home and didn't know what time she really got in. The kids were over her mother's and no one else was in the house. I woke up when I heard a loud bang sound come from the front of the house. I got up to see what the sound was from. That's when I opened the door to the bathroom and saw my beautiful wife surely just lying there. I told them I called 911 immediately and tried giving her mouth to mouth until they showed up. I cried real tears during the entire trial. They were real tears because she had broken my heart and killed me inside. There weren't any tears there because she was dead. The judge didn't think, think there was enough evidence for a trail and he declared her death a terrible accident. Now I have only one problem. Do I seek revenge on the good doctor? Ray, remember it takes two to tango and think if a beautiful, well-built woman came on to you, would you care if she was married, if you were buried in her as deep as you could get it, and she was going wild drilling you? I wasn't sure yet, but then I saw my two kids in the hallway with my mother. I did have a blood test taken, but they never knew why I told them they had to have one if they wanted to go on a Disney cruise with me when school was over for the summer. They were my kids by 99.978% proof from the DNA test. Do I seek revenge on Ray Stevens? No. Why take the chance unless the hate I have for him right now can't be dealt with and won't go away? But as my dead wife said, I'll deal with all that when I get back from my wonderful vacation, dear listeners. Help us reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Something super special awaits once we hit that milestone. Subscribe now.